Now, of course, because I'm criticizing Trump and because I agree with the left that Trump is a racist, I'm a racist. Now, I, sorry, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a leftist. That's or I'm sucking up to the left. But that is pathetic. You know, Trump is playing to the racial prejudices of his supporters. Whether Trump himself is a racist or not, who cares? What Trump is doing is he's fueling xenophobia, racism, the worst kind of nationalism among his supporters, and it is growing, and it is going to become a significant, substantial, powerful political force in this country. Racism is when you attribute to an individual, when you judge an individual not based on who he is, not based on his individual characteristics. It's when you judge a person based on where they came from, based on the color of their skin, based on their ethnic, ethnic background. And that was all over Trump's tweets. And it's all over. The chant sent her back. And I know, you know, I know, this is the way you fight the left. That's okay. That's okay. And, and, and the solution to the left is the authoritarian right, because that's all you're going to have left if this is how you fight the left. If, the, if, the, if the, the choice in America today that Trump is manifesting is between a crazy anti-American socialist left and a crazy anti-American nationalistic right. And you might prefer the nationalistic right on the socialist left, but that is a horrible, horrible choice, and it's not a choice that I would stand by. And it's the choice that, as somebody mentioned on the chat, Leonard Peacock describes in the dim hypothesis, and it's the choice that it seems that America is moving towards, and that is the authoritarianism of the right, the right as the collectivistic right. Um, somebody's saying I'm naive. No, the people who are naive are you. The people who are naive who think that Trump is benign. The people who are naive who think that Trump is just it's just an anti-left, but he's really for free markets and free trade and individual freedom. And, and I'm going to talk, I think tomorrow I'll do a show on, on the new conservative nationalist movement. They just had a conference, National Conservatism Conference in Washington, D.C. last weekend. I'll talk about that tomorrow. And uh, if you think that is a world you would rather live in rather than the world the left is creating, then you are nuts. And, and by the way, this has always been how authoritarians and fascists have risen to power. You know, Hitler was an antidote to the communists. The communists were going to take over. The communists were the biggest threat. There had been a Russian revolution. The Soviet Union was, was, was growing in its, in its influence over the world. And people voted for Hitler as an antidote to the rise of socialism in Europe. It was the anti-left. That's and I'm not saying Trump is Hitler. I'm saying Trump is the precursor to fascism. He is leading us in that direction. But it's always that way. It's always, you know, you get a dictator from the right because the left is so horrible. And we need, we need to fight the left. And the only way to fight the left is to give immense power to the right. And that is just... That is just a, a, a utter, I mean, it's just horrific in terms of, uh, in terms of what, um, what the future holds for America. And, and I'm seeing more and more of this, that the only two alternatives in American politics today are manifest by Donald Trump, which means a movement towards authoritarianism and, and, uh, and more control and collectivism and nationalism on the right and on the left, you know, Pick your poison, AOC, Elizabeth Warren, Bernie Sanders, or nothing like Biden, and nothings never win. Not in the long run. They may win an election, but ideologically they never win. So nothing, and, and, and I'll talk tomorrow about this attempt, this active attempt to um, create an intellectual movement around Trump's ideas, and that's the National Conservative Movement which just had its inaugural conference this last weekend in Washington, D.C., and, and, and made a big splash, and we'll talk about that tomorrow. Oh.
you know, you've been talking about the, the bankruptcy of our, our modern intellectuals. And I know that in your most recent book, this is really a manifesto to a group that you call the new intellectuals. Would you mind telling me just who they are, in your own words, and how they differ from the old-style intellectuals? Well, since the old-style, the presently existing intellectuals have declared their own bankruptcy by abandoning the intellect, what we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brutes. 